Welcome to US Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. I've seen evil inflicted on the innocent with no remorse. Vilest killers must be killed. What happened in the summer of 1921? Bo Hosler takes one shot lead at Zozo Championship. Russian prosecutors to seek pretrial detention for Russian US journalist. End of gardening season saps toolmaker Husqvarna. I've seen evil inflicted on the innocent with no remorse. Vilest killers must be killed. Yahoo! Politicians seeking to repeal Ohio's death penalty are misguided, according to Ray Grogan, the Marion County prosecuting attorney. He argues that executing the most dangerous murderers is the only way to ensure that others will not be endangered. Grogan also suggests that the system should be made faster and more responsive to victims, and that alternative methods to lethal injection should be considered. What happened in the summer of 1921? The Guardian. An exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art, MoMA, in New York City is exploring a key moment in the career of Pablo Picasso. Picasso in Fontainebleau focuses on the summer of 1921, when the artist, his first wife Olga Koklova and their son lived in Fontainebleau, a town just outside Paris. Picasso was able to escape the bustle of the city and create two distinct works, three musicians and three women at the spring. The exhibition, which runs until February 17, displays two versions of each painting side by side. Curator and Umland said the works were as different as can be, with three musicians a jubilant mishmash of polygons presenting a modern street scene, while three women is a somber, primitive look at three realistically depicted women in classical dress. The latter painting was inspired by Picasso's visit to Pompeii in 1917. The exhibition also includes other works from the summer of 1921, as well as pieces that were exhibited in Paris the same year. Bo Hosler takes one shot lead at Zozo Championship. Japan Times. Bo Hosler of the United States is leading the Zozo Championship, Japan's only PGA Tour event, after carting a 5 under 65 in the second round. Hosler has four top 10 finishes this season and is looking for his first career win on the tour. Russian prosecutors to seek pretrial detention for Russian US journalist. Reuters. Russian American journalist Alsa Kermashiva has been arrested in Russia on suspicion of breaking a foreign agent's law and prosecutors are asking a court to place her in pretrial detention. Kermashiva is a journalist for Radio Free Europe slash Radio Liberty, RFE slash RL, which is funded by the US Congress and designated by Russia as a foreign agent. She is accused of failing to register as a foreign agent when she entered Russia in May. This is the second U.S. journalist to be arrested and charged in Russia since the start of the war in Ukraine. The term foreign agent has been applied to various individuals and organizations in Russia and carries with it close government scrutiny. End of gardening season saps toolmaker Husqvarna. Reuters. Husqvarna, a garden tools maker, has missed third-quarter revenue expectations and announced an additional 300 job cuts. The decline in revenue was due to a seasonal slowdown and a decrease in demand across the sector. Husqvarna's sales are concentrated in Europe and North America, where the gardening season typically ends in the third quarter. The company expects its restructuring program, which includes shifting investment to robotic mowers, batteries, watering solutions, and professional products, to be fully implemented by 2025. Other companies in the sector, including Fiskars, Hornbach, and Kingfisher, have also reported lower profits this quarter due to weak consumer sentiment and challenging market conditions. Ukraine fears war fatigue in the West. Deutsche Welle. Support for Ukraine from the West, particularly the US and Europe, is waning due to various factors including the Middle East crisis and war fatigue, according to a DW report. The US has previously pledged to support Ukraine as long as necessary, but President Joe Biden is facing opposition from Republicans who want to cut aid to Ukraine. In Europe, there is growing disillusionment and a lack of solidarity with Ukraine, with some countries even threatening to halt weapons deliveries. Western hesitation and delayed support are seen as hindering Ukraine's ability to achieve a breakthrough in its counteroffensives. Historic church sheltering civilians struck in deadly Gaza city blast. Washington Post. The Church of St. Porphyrius, Gaza's oldest active church, was hit by an Israeli missile strike yesterday. The building was being used to shelter hundreds of Palestinians who had been displaced by the war. The number of casualties is not yet known, although some reports suggest that nine people died and more than a dozen were wounded in the strike. The Greek Orthodox Patriarchate of Jerusalem has blamed Israel for the attack. The Mercedes G-Wagon is going electric. We had the first test drive. Bloomberg. The electric G-Wagon from Mercedes-Benz is even better suited to off-road driving than its internal combustion sibling is. Mercedes has a plan to be able to turn up the capacity to handle EV production.
Ola Kalinius, the CEO of Mercedes, is adamant that going electric, especially with the G-Wagon, is a non-negotiable commitment. Mercedes is spending more than $47 billion to electrify its entire product range this decade, a smaller, electric baby G will arrive in a few years. We're past the phase of the early adopters, he says. Now we need to go into mass adoption. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Sixth Dimension. Let's dive into the latest news. First up, we have Ray Grogan, the Marion County prosecuting attorney, defending the death penalty in Ohio. He argues that executing the most dangerous murderers is necessary to protect others. Well, I suppose if you're going to be evil, you should face the consequences, right? Moving on to the art world, an exhibition at MoMA is shedding light on Pablo Picasso's summer of 1921. He found inspiration in Fontainebleau, creating two distinct works that are now on display. It's fascinating to see the evolution of his style and the different influences that shaped his art. Sports fans, listen up. Bo Hosler is leading the Zozo Championship in Japan. This guy is looking for his first career win on the PGA Tour. Let's hope he doesn't choke under the pressure, unlike some of us when we're trying to sink a putt on mini-golf. In Russia, another journalist has been arrested. Also Kermashiva, a Russian-American journalist, is facing charges of breaking a foreign agent's law. It seems like the Russian government is really cracking down on journalists these days. I guess they don't appreciate a free press, or a good joke for that matter. Husqvarna, the garden tools maker, is feeling the end of the gardening season. Their revenue has taken a hit, leading to job cuts. It's a tough time for the gardening industry, but hey, at least we can all look forward to a nice cup of hot cocoa by the fireplace. Speaking of tough times, Ukraine is feeling the war fatigue from the West. Support for Ukraine is waning due to various factors, including the Middle East crisis. Come on, guys, let's not forget about Ukraine. They could use a little love and support right now. In a tragic event, the Church of St. Porphyrius in Gaza City was hit by an Israeli missile strike. The church was being used as a shelter for displaced Palestinians. It's heartbreaking to see a place of peace and refuge turned into a target of destruction. Lastly, Mercedes-Benz is going electric with their G-Wagon. They even had the first test drive, and apparently, it's even better suited for off-road driving than its gas-guzzling counterpart. Mercedes is serious about their commitment to electrification, and they're investing big bucks to make it happen. I guess even luxury SUVs need to go green these days. That wraps up our news for today. Now, it's time for you, my dear audience, to join the discussion. What do you think about these stories? Do you have any thoughts or questions? Let's hear it. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.